Hello again, guys. Mr. Zigna here. We're looking at lesson 7-3, percent and estimation. So here's some things we're going to look at. Real world examples, percents greater than 100 uh, or less than 1. And, and we're going to finish up with another real world example. All right, let's get started. Of course, we're estimating percents and we're going to use fractions and decimals as we go along. Michelle's paycheck was $590, and 27% was deducted for taxes. How much was deducted? So now we could figure out the exact amount, but we're supposed to, in this case, estimate. We're just going to get a rough idea. So we're allowed to round these numbers to make this problem a lot easier to solve. So I'm just going to round this $590 to $600. And the 27 percent, how about just 30 percent? And then we just multiply those together. Now, if you have your calculator, you can pop that out and do it. Let's see if I can get a calculator out real quick here. There we go. So 600 times 30 percent. I'm going to enter 0 0.30 for 30 percent. Just move that decimal two places to the left. And there we go, $180. And there's our answer, B. Super, let's move on. Suki saves 70% of her monthly allowance. If her monthly allowance is $58, about how much does she save? Okay, so she's saving 70%. That's a nice round number. I'm okay with that just the way it is. Her monthly allowance is $58. Let's make that easier on ourselves and just call it 60. And there's that word about. So clearly we're allowed to round and estimate our answer. Okay. So let's just plug that in to move things along quickly. So 0 0.70 for 70% times 60 and there's our 42 and yep there it is 42 dollars so she's saving about 42 dollars per month estimate 142 percent of 80. now i like this problem it's it's an interesting one in what i think you should do to solve it first i'm going to figure out 100 percent of 80 then I'm gonna figure out well let's see well, I'll just let's call this 142 let's just round that to 140 percent that's a little bit easier so I'm gonna do 100 percent of 80 then I'm gonna do 40 percent because here 100 plus 40 is this total of 140 percent so I'm going to figure out 100% of 80. Well, that's that's easy. That's 80. And I'm also going to figure out 40% of 80. Well, 40% of 80. That's 32. All right, put those two answers together. 80 plus 32. Bam, there we go. 112. So 142% of 80 is 112. Well, roughly estimating. Now, one fifth of a percent of 197. Now, this one also brings up a unique problem. My thought on this is, first of all, instead of one-fifth percent, let's do one percent. All right, so whenever you get a fraction or, well, no, I think they're all going to be fractions, but possibly decimal, that's less than one, more than zero, but less than one. Here's what I suggest you do. First, find one percent. Now, again, we're allowed to round, so let's see here. 197, let's just call that 200. Again, we're estimating so it's okay to round these numbers 
So let's find 1% of 200, first of all. There's a trick to this, but let me show it on the calculator first. 1% 0.01 times 200. There it is, 2. 1% of 200 is 2. Now, do you see the trick? Basically, we're moving the decimal over two places. Well, that's 1%. To always find 1% of a number, just move the decimal two places to the left. And that is 1% of whatever that number is. Okay, but now here's the thing. We weren't supposed to find 1%. We're supposed to find one-fifth of a percent. So we need really one-fifth, one-fifth of one. So what I'm going to do to finish this up is basically take one-fifth of this two. So I need one-fifth of two and that should figure it out for us. So what is one-fifth of two? Well, the same problem might be stated as two divided by five. That's a pretty good way of doing that. Take the two and divide it into five equal parts. So <clears throat> two divided by five, there it is, 0.4. So in summary, on this kind of weird problem, first find, if it's a percent less than 1%, first find 1% of that number, of the rounded number. Once you do that, here's the trick. Divide it by the denominator. Do you see that? So first I found 1% of 200. Got that answer. And then I just divided that answer by the, right here, this 5, which is the denominator of the fraction. You might have to listen to that part a couple times to try to let that make sense. All right, but for now, let's move on. The attendance at a popular outdoor concert was recorded at 6,973. Of those attending, 0.5% were security personnel. About how many security people were present? Well, as you can imagine, I'm going to round that off to, can you guess? Yep, 7,000. Now, once again, I have a, a percent that's less than 1%, 0 0.5. So I'm just going to find out 1% first. What's 1%? Remember that trick I showed you on the last slide? All you have to do is move that decimal two places to the left. So 1% of 7,000 is actually 70. Here, but I'll show it to you on the calculator. There's my 1% times 7,000. And there's the 70. Okay. But that's 1%. So 1% is 70. But I was supposed to figure out 0.5%. So what is 0.5% equal? Well, isn't 0.5 the same thing as 1 half? Sure, because the way you say 0.5 is 5 tenths. 5 tenths, written as a fraction, is 5 over 10. And yep, 5 over 10 simplifies to 1 over 2. So 5 tenths is 1 half. Okay, so I need half of the 1%. Well, let's see then, half of 1% or half of 70 in this case would be 35. So review that one real quick. First of all, I found 1% of the rounded number. That was 70. And that was 1%. And then since I was only supposed to find a half of a percent, they wrote it as 0.5%, I just took half of the 70 and half of the 70 right here is 35. You might want to listen to that one more time to make sure you understood that problem. Oh, and look at that. We're already at the end. Thanks for joining me today. My students should complete the questions below this video on my homework page of my website. Everyone else, thanks for tuning in. Hope this was helpful and we'll catch up with you soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.
Thanks for joining me as we work our way through the 7th Grade Math Connects textbook. Feel free to email me with any questions. My website is www.mattzigner.com. On my site, you'll find links to my math blog, some of my favorite educational sites, and lots of helpful information for students, parents, and teachers. See you next time.